The time has come. A very warm welcome to Rexroth on Air, our first virtual product show. My name is Maxi Zavas and I'm happy that you found the time to tune into our session. Today it's all about hydraulics, to be precise, about mobile hydraulics. And you can expect the unexpected here. During the next one and a half hours, you will find out what transforming mobile machines have to offer beyond the classic hydraulics. And, well, green what? <laughs> this is obviously a question, right? But at the same time, this will also be an answer to how Rexroth's products will help you to be more sustainable. So this is revolutionary excellence, and I can't wait to discover the latest developments of the industry together with you. So, I think you all guys are tech savvy and prepared, so let me introduce some interactive features. At the bottom right side of your screen, you'll find an emoji meter. Anytime you want to express a quick feedback about the show, a product or what I, maybe I am doing here on stage, then just press uh, the button or ABC, whatever is displayed on your display. And uh, yes, try it out right now. Send us an emoji. So from time to time, we ask you directly for your opinion. Then the emoji meter will transform into a multiple choice poll. And we offer a download area. There we provide you with uh, further information about specific products and solutions. So as you can see, we have high ambitions for you and we are doing so because we think that we can only become better together. And this is why we value your opinion. We offer live Q&A sessions for each and every product category. Simply drop your question down into the live window. And please keep in mind that due to our privacy policy, all questions will be anonymized, which means that in case that we um, if we can't come back to you directly and your question hasn't been answered during our Q&A session, then please go to the experts chat, which we will activate right away after this live session. There you can discuss your issue directly with one of our product experts. So to make a long story short, do you want to learn more about the latest technologies? Then stay tuned and explore more. I think you all know the following person. Let's hear the introducing words by Peter Gida, the Senior Vice President Sales from Mobile Hydraulics. Mobile machines are transforming the world. Just here, right behind me, at the construction site of Rexroot New Customer and Innovation Center, located in Ulm. Global trends like urbanization, a growing world population, or climate change require transformation in our industries. This leads to concrete challenges and stricter regulations for the mobile machines. This is like reduction of exhaust gas emission, reduction of noise, improvement of safety functions, and reduction of the energy consumptions for the machine itself, which leads to a need of higher efficient systems. And this is why Bosch Rexroth is dedicated to transforming mobile machines. But what does that mean? Well, come on, let's talk about it. So thank you very much, Peter. Unfortunately, he can't be here with us today. So let's go on with shaping the future, discussing it and exploring it with Alexander Fly. Good to have you here in this amazing studio. Thank you very much, Maxi. <laughs> Pleasure. So I'm so proud to have you here on stage because you are really experienced. You know about the trends that thrive the industry. And Peter already talked about uh, the many challenges. It sounds tremendous and it seems for me that it's almost too much to handle. Well, there are challenges especially since we have to deal with conflicting targets, as Peter said. Uh, on the one hand, you want to reduce the installed power. On the other hand, machine performance should stay the same at less fuel consumption. Um, but above all, I think our industry is well set up to handle these challenges. Technology is moving so fast 
And uh, we have big companies around, like Bosch Rexroth, that uh, invest a huge deal of their earnings into research and development to come up with the necessary innovations. So technology is the key? I mean, technology has come to a point where it opens up many new options and, uh, and potential for, uh, for design engineers mm -hmm. to build better machines. Machines that are safer, that are cleaner, that are more quiet, and above all, um, more efficient. Mm -hmm. So this is what you all mean by transforming mobile machines? I mean, uh, transforming mobile machines, um, it's important to keep in mind that there is a transformation that has happened and is still happening now. And after the now, and there, there will be a next. And after the next, there will be a beyond. What I mean is, it's a process, not uh, an evolution rather than a revolution. Mm -hmm. So what are the technologies that drive the industry? Uh, good question. Um, from the Rexroth perspective, of course, smart hydraulics. But then we have electrification coming up. We have um, connectivity to the internet and more and more automation in the systems, um, maybe even based uh, sooner or later on artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So there will be only electric drives in the future? Uh, no, there is no black and white there. Um, actually, Electric drives is a good example for this evolutionary transition. Um, we will see a coexistence of technology, a, a diversity in technology in the various applications uh, with a wide range, ranging from still fully combustion engine driven over hybrid solutions to full electric solutions. Okay, I got it. So it's the clever combination of uh, both. And you want to work on this? You want to develop this in the future? I mean, we have, de have been developing on clever combinations for the whole time. Um, for example, um, in energy recuperation, very standard thing for, for increasing efficiency. Um, you can do that fully electrically, you can do that uh, by means of hydraulics. And in some applications, it might be good to combine the two. For example, if we take an uh, a implement pump and fit it with an overcentering function so that it can act as a pump or a motor, we can feed back hydraulic power onto an electric generator, and we've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. I know that on your business card, it says mobile hydraulics. And of course, I know that you have a long history and outstanding reputation mm -hmm. in providing uh, the industry with the hydraulic components. But are you really in a position to contribute also to these new areas? Uh, we get that question quite a lot. Uh, Usually not, are you in a position? The question is, what do you have to offer above the hydraulics, beyond the hydraulics? And people ask this uh, because we are a part of the Bosch Group, global major player in the field of um, vehicle electronics or internet uh, connectivity. And um, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, we have much more to offer, especially uh, when it comes to integrating and combining different technologies. But then you have to change your business card. I don't take offense in the word hydraulics. You know, <laughs> uh, for me, this has always been much more than just a pump or a valve mm -hmm. uh, or pressures and flows. It's about the right system integration. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. And this is also why it's not so much about classic hydraulics today during this show. Because right? it combines well with other mm -hmm. technologies. Today we will focus on uh, the new technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, we will hear from Thierry Dumont and uh, Josef Matti about mm -hmm. our new BODAS, one of the systems by which you can turn the hydraulics and take it into the digital world and uh, the connectivity. Mm -hmm. But there's even more to come, right? Matthias Kielwasser then will mm -hmm. tell us what uh, it means to develop electric drives, mm -hmm. especially dedicated for the requirements of the off-highway market, which is, I think, a quite compelling story because it's quite different from taking existing drives from neighboring fields of application and make them fit somehow, uh, very, something you can really look forward to. So yes, today we are setting off a huge firework of fascinating speakers who tell you what transforming mobile machines have to offer beyond the classic hydraulics. But do you completely drift away now from the classic hydraulic business? I mean, rock solid and smart hydraulics, they will still um, be the foundation of many uh, machine types. 
And therefore, no, we are not going to drift away. Um, we rather uh, take it one step further. For example, with electronic control, um, electrohydraulics will play a major role there, and I think we are well set up to do that. Okay, can you give us an example? For example, the uh, electronification of open circuit systems. Uh, in fact, I'm quite proud to announce today that we will launch a new pump next year. Uh, we call it the EOC pump because it will make the electronic control of open circuit systems a reality. Well, so you have even more excitement for us. A groundbreaking innovation for us in store. Ooh, groundbreaking is a big <laughs> word, uh, but ma maybe it fits. I mean, it's one thing to um, take a variable displacement mm -hmm. pump, put a solenoid on it and make it, uh, make it actuate, mm -hmm. but it's an entirely different story to be able to switch from pressure control to flow control to power control and all that within milliseconds and always keep the dynamics of the system 100% under, under control. And, uh, and do that in all the boundary conditions, uh, keeping the system stable. Uh, that's really rocket science in terms of control theory. And um, this, this opens so many new opportunities. So you see, I'm quite excited and proud of this. Yes. And moreover, uh, this pump will have over-centering capacities as well, uh, mm -hmm. as, I, as I said before. So as you can see, we have high ambitions for you. Do you have more examples? Um, take our, um, our family of RS valves, uh, mm -hmm. also with electrohydraulic control, gives, uh, gives us much more options um, to uh, configure valve blocks uh, by choosing the right size for the right functions, mm -hmm. or um, entirely new systems as we get more and more electric drives in the machines. Uh, together with hydraulics, uh, there are many new topologies evolving, very interesting ones. Um, I guess it's all about finding the right combinations under a solid knowledge of the real load cycle in a machine, and this will be definitely a winning factor. So classic hydraulics will still play a major role in the future? Um, classic hydraulics, um, let, me, let me call it smart or, um, or, or uh, up-to-date hydraulics, mm -hmm. will still play a major role, mm -hmm. which we will hear, uh, but it complements well with these other technologies. Mm -hmm. And we will hear about that from uh, Thierry, Josef mm -hmm. and Matthias up now. Yes, exactly. So thank you very much for this start into this live session, for your pioneering and unique uh, viewpoints. Uh, we see each other again later on. Thank you very much. See you later. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to conquer. But yes, of course, to conquer, it needs strong partners who do the right things together. And to conquer, it requires knowledge. So I think you can all gain something from the next item on our agenda. Let's talk about borders with Thierry Dumont. Hello, good to Hello, have you Maxi. here. Good to be here. <laughs> so, Alexander already spoke so much about intelligent solutions for machines. You are responsible for the mobile electronics at Bosch Rexroth. So how do you and your colleagues support these intelligent solutions? Yes, look, we, we've heard about all the challenges that the machines uh, and the machine manufacturers have to, to fulfill. Um, they have basically one thing in common. They all need an electronic brain to be solved. Um, and even at component level with the new EOC pump, the functionality to switch from one control mode to the other in, in milliseconds, it's also done with electronics. So electronics and software are also an integral part of hydraulic components now. Mm -hmm. Sounds really interesting. But by the way, what does the name BODAS stand for? <laughs> BODAS stands for... Uh, it's we gather our electronics offering under this name, under the roof name of BODAS. It stands for Bosch Rexroth Digital Application Solutions. We, we offer hardware, software and connectivity solution for mobile machines. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice cube, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's there. <laughs> so we talk about brain, we talk about functionalities. Where do I find it here? Well, the functionalities are typically built up in, in software. So this is the first asset I would like to, to start with. Here we've put all our machine expertise and hydraulic know-how available in, in a digital way. Uh -huh. So you offer different software for different tasks, right? Yes, ex exactly. Okay. We offer off-the-shelf software 
for driving, for working, but also for energy management mm -hmm. as well as for auxiliary functions. Well, it looks like a wide portfolio. Yeah, it's wide. <laughs> can you give us an example for application software? Yes, we can take driving with BODAS. Mm -hmm. Here we have a wheel loader in our testing uh, facility in, in Elchingen. Now we're starting moving. Very slow, smooth start, everything under control. Now we're going to get more power, full acceleration. We take profit of the full uh, capability of the hydrostatic mm -hmm. drive here. Looks like and fun. here, fine control. Look at that. In the, in the slope, very low mm -hmm. speed, completely under control. Mm -hmm. This is driving, but mobile machines are, are here to work, actually. Yes. That's why we built them. Actually, yeah. um, so here's an example also loading, unloading cycle, what we call the Y cycle. Very powerful way of working with, with the wheel loader here. Mm -hmm. So EDA is really the hydrostatic drive like you want it to be. And it's available off the shelf. Off the shelf. Well, but this means that it's for all the same, right? Mm -hmm. So the manufacturers then can differentiate themselves from the markets. Yes, they can differentiate. We have prepared the software with many parameters so that you can tune the machine and have it behave the way you want it to behave. Uh, and if it's not enough, you can modify the software or have us modify the software uh, to make it fit your need. It's up to you. Okay, good news. I think the audience appreciates this. So let us talk now about the hardware requirements for the BODIS software. Okay, the application software typically runs on electronic control unit on, on ECUs. And our ECUs are the core uh, of BODIS hardware. Uh, here we have really a, an amazing combination of electronic know-how, manufacturing know-how, it's, it's automotive technology, specially adapted for mobile machines. Okay, so let's make uh, the deep dive here. What makes mm -hmm. it so special? Yeah, uh, we're introducing right now our new series, Series 40. Uh, the motto behind it was improve what's good and create new. So now we have more power, more functional safety, up to agricultural performance level D for the specialists, and we have more security. <laughs> okay, wait, security and safety, isn't it the same? It's like the other way around. The, the functional safety is here to protect the operator and the bystanders from the machine. Mm -hmm. The security is about protecting the machine from getting accessed from the outside. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and uh, for the OM, this, this is becoming more and more a concern. They have to make sure that nobody that is not authorized can access the machine. Uh, and for this, we have an integrated security module inside our hardware. It is, it is the base to get really an efficient security concept. So first the hardware with the security module inside, then a second layer is the uh, in-vehicle communication, the third layer would be uh, the E domain architecture, and finally you have the connection to ex external interfaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else stands out in the ECU offering? Yeah, for, for us offering an ECU, it is not only about inputs and outputs and, and canvases and, and so on. It's about helping the OEM to focus on its own valuable tasks. So we care for high quality management, uh, production. We deal with obsolescence management, so you don't have to worry. Uh, you get the parts available for a long time. And we support also the OEM during the development phase. Ah, okay, you mean the software developments? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. uh, I speak here about the uh, integrated development environment, the ID. Uh, we provide here a clear structure mm -hmm. on, on how to work with software. First, a configuration tool like you see here on the, on the screen, starting from the pin. Uh, you can select which function you want behind that, which name you give it, uh, what type of diagnostic you will want to, to have. Then you can use the powerful programming interface to really focus on, on your valuable task. I mean programming the machine control software. Okay, got it, yes. Uh, do you support more than the development phase? Um, yes, w once the software is done and you get it loaded in the, in the uh, ECU, uh, you will have it in the field. Then you need a service tool. Uh, our tool is, is, is called Boda Service. Mm -hmm. With Boda Service, we are uh, fulfilling many use cases. It's about service in the field. It's about calibration parameters during the setup of the machine. 
and for example, flashing also end of line in, in, in the plant. And not only for our ECU, uh, we're supporting valves, uh, we're supporting Bosch sensors like ultrasonic sensors and radars, uh, and soon also our joysticks. Mm -hmm. All in one tool. And with that tool, you can also create service apps from very standard one to, to dashboard types to fully customized apps in HTML. Ah, okay. So, but for telling the truth, it might be that an OEM <laughs> might already have a service tool. So do they need to then? No, they don't need to. And, and, and it was clearly part also of our requirements here for, the, for this tool. So we've decided to work with standards like UDS and ODX so that it is possible for third-party tools mm -hmm. to interact with our ECU. So we offer both the complete tool chain, but also the openness to interact with existing infra infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's easy access and it's open. Do you understand uh, it correctly? Uh, I mean, five minutes ago, we were still talking about transforming, about, uh, transforming mobile machines and look where we've ended right now. Yes, I mean, uh, today, speaking about software, about safety, about security, about diagnostic concept, it, it goes now hand in hand uh, when designing uh, a new mobile machines. Mm -hmm. uh, at Rexford, that's actually what we call our Bodas ecosystem. An ecosystem. So this is quite an unusual term, right? Yeah, <laughs> you could say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I would like to ask the audience, what do you think? about this term, about ecosystem. So let's start with our first voting. My question is, what is your definition of an ecosystem? Is it A, a holistic approach for mobile electronics, or is it B, uh, electronic hardware for mobile machines? That's quite difficult, right? Can you help? Yeah, it's quite easy, actually. Is it? I would say. Okay. Uh, can I give you a hint, maybe? Yes, uh, please. If you, if you look into a machine, and you, you will see what type of components are being used there. Uh, but the really interesting things is to look at the decision process that was behind that to select these components. And our experience shows clearly that uh, it is not only the component itself, but much more what's around it. What type of concept you have for safety, for security, for programming, what type of support do you provide, what type of application software do you have? So this is this holistic approach that makes interesting. This is our Borders ecosystem. Okay, I can't wait to see what uh, your choice was, A or B. So let's have a look at uh, the results right now. What do you think? <laughs> okay. The answer is clear Looks, to see. That's the right answer. Yeah. I think we've got great customers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's right, really. This, this holistic approach is what helps us to support the OEM mm -hmm. so they can be safe, they can be uh, secure, they can be efficient, they can be future-proof when designing a new mobile machine. And, and this from the development to the series. So thank you very much for this clear statement. What else besides ECU and tools? Um, if, if, if you want the software inside the ECU to take decisions, you need to provide it with information. Uh, and they are valuable information that we are using, typically uh, the status of the machine uh, and also the operator needs. OK, how do you know about the status of the machine? Uh, typically, we do it with, with sensors. And in, in, in hydraulics, you will need uh, pressure sensors, you will need speed sensor, temperature sensors, we, we offer all the necessary sensors at, at Rexford. Ah, OK. I would expect nothing else from Rexford for telling <laughs> the truth. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but there is maybe one sensor I would like to speak about. There's one more. Uh, I would like to introduce our new inertial measuring unit uh, here, uh, inertial sensor. With that sensor, you can measure all the accelerations in all directions and in all rotations. Mm -hmm. But honestly, this now has not a lot to do with hydraulics. It has to do with, uh, because with that sensor, you can register motions, like from the boom from the machine, for example. And this is the basis if you want to be able to reproduce the motion or you want to be able to go back to a point you've been before. That's what we call assistance functions. Uh, I've got one here. Uh, okay. We call it virtual walls. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. On that machine here, uh, we have the possibility to, to move to a certain position here on the height to say this is the maximum height I want to work. Then we activate the virtual walls. From that moment, 
it's impossible to move higher than that position. So you are sure that you will not damage the surroundings Impressive. here. Impressive. Okay. Mm -hmm. And easy. Easy handling. So I believe you that you have even more excitement for us. I'm totally convinced about that because you talked so much about uh, the machine status, but you left out the operator needs. Yes, we, we have to speak about that too. Um, typically, the uh, operator needs is coming from joysticks or from uh, a foot pedal. No? So what we call the human machine interface or, or the HMI. Okay, so Rexroth, I think, has a dedicated group working on this. So I would like to hand over to its leader, to uh, Patrick Glasbrenner. Patrick, are you ready? Yes, I am, Terry. Thanks for allowing me to join in. Indeed, human machine interface, such as joysticks, foot pedals, are key in the perception of machine behavior. Moreover, our customers are facing three major challenges. Number one, HMI must remain controllable despite the rising amount of machine functions. Number two, there is the demand to standardize machine cabins, considering different applications and machine models. And number three, HMI needs to enable an interaction between machine and operator in order to improve efficiency and safety. The new multifunctional joystick grip Sense Plus from Bosch Rexroth is solving these three problems by combining high amount of functions, excellent ergonomics, and haptic and visual feedback elements. The unique grip shape has been designed together with end users around the world and ergonomic specialists applying an iterative process. Due to a large amount of standard configuration variants, the grip can be adapted easily to different applications and machine options. The integrated vibration feedback element enables to guide and warn the driver intuitively. For example, the vibration intensity can be used to indicate the distance to a virtual wall. If warning the operator is not sufficient, the new electrohydraulic power brake Gemini facilitates an automatic braking of the machine. The modular and scalable platform allows easy brake system upgrades from hydromechanical to electronic override up to full brake by wire without changing the hydraulic hardware. Thanks to the parallel spool design, safety performance levels up to PLD are achievable and different brake pressures in the front and rear circuit are possible to avoid blocking wheels. To sum it up, with intuitive, safe and comfortable joysticks and foot pedals and brake valves from Bosch Rexroth, we help to bring the human machine interface to the next level, improving the perception of machine behavior and supporting assistant functions. You are invited to check it out yourself, Terry. <laughs> okay, so have you paid attention? You're invited. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> okay, so we talked so much now about uh, the needs of the machine and uh, the operator needs. Is there even more to come? Yes, until now we were inside the machine, uh, but now we can go beyond the machine uh, with this Rexford connectivity unit, the RCU. Uh, with the connectivity unit, we can gather data and send them to the cloud, or we can get data from the cloud into the machine. Now, this is also why security is so important. Yes, absolutely. Because the machine is, of course, connected to the internet. Yeah. But what can I do with this connection? There are, well, well, there are many things you can do once you're connected with the Internet of Things. And, and to be honest, the best person, person to speak about it today is my colleague, Joseph Matti. Oh, yes. He will join us in a minute, of course. But uh, before this, I think this is the right time to answer some questions from our uh, Q&A. Yeah, sure. Okay, so here we go. Let's start the Q&A session. So, first question. Regarding service apps in Boda service, if as an OEM, I develop my own software, can I also develop a matching service app? Thank you so much for this question. 
Yes, that's the, the apps I talked about before. Yes, uh, within Borders service, there is a tool called Borders Editor. With that editor, you can select the parameters you want to use, which access rights you want to give to them, and also the design of your app there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to do it fully flexible, uh, then you have the HTML technology for that. Mm -hmm. So, good question, good answer. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next one. About the new ECU series, is Ethernet going to be available? Yes, uh, Ethernet will be, uh, is available in the mid and large size uh, controller. Uh, what we did is, uh, we didn't want to limit us to just flashing functionality and so on. So, we integrated the Ethernet protocol T1, so called T1 or Broader Reach. Uh, which is ideal for in-vehicle communication. Okay, so what else? Are you in for another question? Yeah, Okay. Go ahead. So, I take this one. What other in assistance functions are possible besides the virtual walls? Yeah, there was just one that we were shown here. Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time thinking about what type of assistance functions might make sense for which machine. Uh, since it's completely new. Uh, for some of them, we already have it validated, ready to be, to be done in, in project. For some of them, we still need to validate them. Uh, for example, functions like grading or uh, like uh, slow limitation, like parallel motion can be, can be done. But it is mostly very specific with which machine you are working with. So here I would recommend to get in touch with us and we can speak about the automation functions we can, we can implement with you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we could go on for hours, but I think for the moment, uh, this is it. Uh, so, thank you very much for uh, speaking with us about uh, Borders hardware and software. So, ladies and gentlemen, in case your question won't be uh, hasn't been answered now during uh, this uh, Q&A session, then please go to uh, the experts chat right away after uh, this live session. We activate it and then you can discuss your issue directly with one of our product experts. You offer mm -hmm. trainings yes. in different languages and yes. formats, including virtual trainings. Mm -hmm. And you can find all the information about this in our download area. So once again, thank you very much, Thierry. You're very welcome. So without further ado, let's go on with our next topic. The digital business developer, Josef Matti, is here with me now. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. So, after talking about Bodas software and Bodas hardware, of course, now we have to talk about Bodas... Connect. Exactly. Yes, let's talk about Bodas Connect, the IoT solution for the off-highway market. Getting a vehicle connected means that you can bring data to the machine as well as sending data out of the machine. And this enables, on the one hand, fleet managers to track the operations of the vehicles in the field. And on the other hand, service technicians can investigate the uh, machine over the air, for example, in case of uh, misuse or failures. So I would love to see that. Yes, I would like to do so. So let's have a quick look on how, for example, service technicians and R&D engineers see their vehicles over the air. So what we see here is the Basics, that means the vehicle position and when and how often the vehicle has been operating during the last days. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks like a lot of information here. Yeah? Definitely, yes. Um, we have here the um, trip details that help to understand what has been going on and how the vehicle was operated. And furthermore, the visualization of machine signals um, and thresholds help to identify root cause or um, machine misuse. Mm -hmm. Do you work with algorithm? Yes, we do. And in the third use case, we will see that um, we are using algorithms to process and to analyze and visualize the condition monitoring data of the hydraulic subsystem. With, this, um, it, uh, with these insights, they help to identify problems early so that the operator can take appropriate measures. Okay, and solving problems early can save a lot of money, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so is uh, the visualization of your product what makes it so special in the end? I would say it's not so much about what the user can see in front of the screen. The USPs are hidden under the hood. 
Um, to give you an example, with Bosch Rexrod, you pay up to 10 times less data traffic fees than with any other solution in the market. And the reason for that is that we are using um, algorithms on the gateway that are compressing the data before sending them out to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, we think that we are the nicest in displaying data um, just because the, you can widely configure the widgets and the user interface on your own. But who doesn't think that she or he isn't the nicest? Oh, I think you are really nice. You are also very nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank, thank you very you much, so much. Maxi. <laughs> <laughs> so what else uh, besides providing the nicest design? Yeah, so there are also other handy things under the hood. Um, mm -hmm. A very important point is that we clearly differentiate between the data and the device management. Okay, can you explain this? Data device management, what is it? Let's start with the data management. So roughly speaking, data management is what the end user basically um, yeah, sees in front. Um, and uh, it's like the relevant data about the machine functions or the position of the machine. And the OEM can distinguish himself from the competition by defining this user interface um, and defining also what data should be displayed. Mm -hmm. And what is device management? On the other hand, device management is like the operation system of a connectivity. That means uh, normally the end user won't see that. And for this, we also offer a highly professional solution. So that in the end, the OEM can focus on what brings him value without, without the need to hassle with the nasty work that has to be done in the, let's say, machine room of the IoT solution. Okay, I understand it. But why is it so important to separate what I can see and what I can't see? So data management and device management. Yeah, that's because the um, separation is crucial to have an open and modular approach. And on the other hand, um, we avoid technological lock-in with that. Mm -hmm. So do you, how do you achieve this modularity in the connectivity units? Mm -hmm. So we provide um, 4G connectivity units with the well-established Linux operating system and a container-based device software. This means that the hardware and the um, upper software levels are completely separated from each other, especially also the application layer. And this separation includes the device management and also application features running on the gateway. Mm -hmm. So it's just a bit like with my PC, right? Then I have Windows and I have, well, software providers and I have uh, the hardware providers and application software providers, all that stuff together, right? That's right, yes. So when you are getting a new computer, normally you just um, take Word, excellent, all the applications you are using um, from the, your old device to a new device. Um, you don't rewrite all these applications. You just have to reinstall them on the new device. Mm -hmm. But honestly, isn't it state of the art to run the software independently from the hardware? Not really. So most of the solutions on the market um, are based on a microcontroller um, architecture where you are locked into both the hardware supplier and also the IoT solution supplier. And guess how often you need to update the connectivity units over the lifetime of your machine. That means in the next 15 to 20 years. And by the way, what mobile device did you use in your pocket or did you have in your pocket 15 years ago? I had a Nokia phone. Yes, me too, with a snake game. Yes, Do I you used remember it also. It? Yeah, it was really a lot of Great fun to fun. use it. <laughs> yes. Okay, tell us a little bit more about the stuff that I can't see. So about the device connectivity and the device management. For telling the truth, I can't really grab it. Mm -hmm. So device management has different aspects. Uh, first of all, the device handling services come for configuring the connectivity unit, monitoring whether the connection works, handling of the SIM card and the most important issue of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. In sum, all the basics that don't deliver any USP for an OEM towards his end user and customers. Mm -hmm. So what else does your device management offer? For example, custom software and the cloud to cloud interface. This means updating the RCU software and deploying or updating functionality. That means software you want to deploy onto the connectivity device are usually data pre-processing algorithms or remote diagnosis features. What does this mean for the users? 
Yeah, let me explain it in this way. You are totally free to develop and deploy any software you want to use on your own. And what is even better, you can um, develop them in the software language that you want. That means that you can choose from a wide range of standard languages. Um, and uh, we are also using an open tool chain and we enable for the, re re for, sorry, for the reusability of standard modules. Mm -hmm. So, do I understand you correctly? There's no need to ask Bosch Rexroth to program the features? Absolutely, no need to ask Bosch Rexroth. You can involve the partners that you know um, or any others. Um, and furthermore, we provide also a cloud-to-cloud -cloud API so that you can integrate the Bosch Rexroth device management into your existing solution. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So what about uh, the over-the-air services? The over-the-air services are for deploying new and servicing existing software features mm -hmm. within the domain controllers. And here we are talking about the ECUs that Thierry spoke about uh, or mentioned earlier. Besides that, we offer also diagnosis services for these ECUs. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example for this over-the-air services? Yeah, sure. So one example is changing parameters. Here we are talking about parameters over the air. Um, for example, when you want to define how the vehicle accelerates, deaccelerates or reverses. And another use case is software over the air where you can um, deploy new software to the existing one on the Rexroth connectivity unit. So both deployments need, uh, need to be safe and secure in this case. Uh -huh. So it's just a bit like what we are used to with our smartphones, right? Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how you can manage your device lifecycle. Here you see all the registered devices with all relevant information about hardware and the software status. And as you see, there are a lot of information and yeah. uh, this is just to have an overview about the devices that are online. And now you see how easy it is to log into a machine controller and remotely flash it as a software developer. Mm. With Bodas Connect, you even can deploy software as a campaign across uh, the entire fleet. So it looks easy. And it is also easy, in fact. Um, and with the third use case, we want to show that for service technicians, diagnosis of controllers is not a big deal. So you can quickly check the controller over the air um, for errors, as uh, you can see here. Mm -hmm. So I really like how you address the needs of the software developers and the technicians, because, well, we can only become better together, right? That's right. And for us, user and customer feedback is very important. And this uh, strives us and uh, helps us to improve the Bodas Connect offering and also to expand the portfolio and the value proposition together with our partners and our customers. Yes. What do you think of a voting, by the way? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes? Okay. So, we would like to know, are you happy with the IoT solution that you have? Press A for yes, B for no, not really, or C for we don't have an IoT solution, yes. And while you are voting, let's look back for a short summary. So we have been digging deep into the IT world. What should I keep in mind? What is most important? Mm -hmm. So I would like to underline um, three elements in the Bodas Connect portfolio. The first one is the connectivity unit, the Rexroth connectivity unit, um, where we have a clear separation between the software and the hardware layer. The gateway is run um, on a Linux system and we have a um, container-based software architecture. The second um, element which I would like to underline is the highly professional device management with state-of-the-art over-the-air services for domain controllers and campaign management. And last but not least, we have a very user-friendly data management with the various options to analyze and display the data. So summing up, Bodas Connect is a really and truly modular, scalable and open portfolio. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for that thank summary. You, and in the meantime, I hope you did your voting. So let's have a look at the, uh, the results. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yes, me too. OK, so are you happy with the IoT solution that you have? Here are your answers. Still growing? Well, I think 
Most of them are going with answer A. Yes. So, so most luckily, of them are for, happy. luckily for our customers, so <laughs> mostly most of them have an IoT solution and they're happy with that. So um, for those, if, if I may comment that, um, for those um, who selected A, um, we think that um, that for sure we are open um, to discuss also, let's say, further trends, technologies, and um, yeah, maybe some trends that are upcoming and that can maybe also change things in the future. And uh, for those customers who don't have an IoT um, solution yet, um, we think that with Bodas Connect, we have a very robust and flexible stack that can be used um, because additionally, um, things like computing power interfaces and the mobile radio are continuously changing and improving. And with Bodas Connect, we are addressing these points today and also in future. So thank you very much for uh, helping us with uh, the answer and uh, great news. Thank you. By very the much. way, yeah. So uh, what do you think of Q and A? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Let's try that out. So let's give it a go. Okay. Well, I start right away. I think with the first question. Um, the data don't have to go through Bosch service. This is the question. Not sure if I understood it correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's can you absolutely help? right. So the the uh, your data um, must not uh, go through Bosch service if you have your own data management. That means um, that you can source the Rexrod connectivity unit, the device software, and also the device management from Rexrod, and you can continuing um, to use the data management that you have today. Mm -hmm. Which control units are uh, compatible with a Bodus Connect? Yeah, when we are talking about the CAN data that has to be sent out to the machine, um, the data should just be available on the CAN. So here um, it's not relevant what manufacturer you are using for the ECUs. Um, maybe one comment to our own ECUs, that means the Rexford controllers for the Series 30. Um, we are able to um, provide the over-the-air services today. And for this upcoming Series 40, as Thierry already has mentioned, the over-the-air services will come in the next year and will be then provided to our customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, perhaps this one. Do you offer a test phase? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm happy that this question uh, came up. So we are using so-called proof of concepts with, within starter kits so that you can easily and um, in short term test Bodas Connect and the solution within three or six months. And there we are also differentiating whether you want um, the starter kit, including data management or without. So I think just reach out to the sales colleague or um, the, in the expert call uh, expert chat, sorry, yes. so that um, yeah, we can follow up with you. Mm -hmm. Discuss your issue directly with the experts if you have questions left and we activate it right away after this live session. So thank you very much for this deep dive into connectivity. Thanks for having me here. So ladies and gentlemen, our goal is to give you something more. For more time to deepen your knowledge, for time to try new things out, for time to experience all this, for more focus on topics that move you and move us. And for this reason, I think you can gain something from the next item on our agenda. Let's talk with the head of electrification at Rexroth, Matthias Kielwasser now. So, good to have you here. As we can see so far, our technical world will continue to change rapidly. And a new world, on the other hand, this is also what I learned here so far, is that it means also new ideas and new possibilities. And one of these ideas is electrification, right? Yes, that's true. You know, I'm really pleased to be here today and to inform you and our customers about the Rexford electrification activities and the new 700 volt product portfolio for mobile machineries that we're going to introduce to the market. And I mean, as already mentioned by you, the off highway really starts to transform. And it is our mission to actively support the OEM 
to realize the new generation of electrified machines. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Let's play a game. Okay. I would like to talk about the trends that thrive the industry. Uh, I give you buzzwords mm -hmm. and you have to answer only with one sentence. Let's try. Yeah? Okay. So, here's my first buzzword. Lower emissions. Hmm. You know, I would even go one step further. Bosch is speaking about zero local emission, which is quite often demanded in restricted areas such as urban environments, underground mining and future also in harbors. But generally spoken, we expect electrification to become more and more a topic of wider legislative activities. Just think about what did happen during the last 20 years when it is about allowed NOx and particular emissions and keep in mind all of the country running discussions about CO2 and then you will realize uh, what I'm talking about. And please let me add one additional topic. When speaking about emissions, it is also a matter of reducing noise emissions. I mean, <laughs> I'm aware of this was more than just one sentence, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> just a bit, a tiny bit more than one sentence. Uh, well, but anyway, it was a really great answer. So my next word here on my card is battery. Very important topic. Indeed, I would um, assume that electrification in the off highway is not just limited to battery electric solutions. We expect different solution approaches to become relevant for the market. Battery electric but also hybrid and diesel electric, and don't forget about fuel cell driven and grid connected approaches. Basically, all of those architectures have one thing in common. They require highly efficient systems in order to either reduce the battery dimension or to optimize the total cost of ownership. Mm -hmm. Okay, this would have been uh, the other word on my card cost, mm. but I think you already answered it right now. Yeah. Great answer, by the way, once again. Thank you very much. I think you've won the game. <laughs> I hope so. So let me come back to the battery topic. Will this be also part of your business? No, it won't. We will not have a battery in our portfolio. We will rather focus on our core competencies that allow us to act as a system supplier for our mm -hmm. customers. What does that mean? It means that based on our deep application know-how, we will make cross-technological solutions happen. Starting with hydraulics, you know Bosch Rexroth very well as one of the market leaders for hydraulic systems, including comprehensive and state-of-the-art software functions. Then, furthermore, with gear units, amongst others, with our well-known GFT family for hub drive solutions. And last but not least, I'm really proud to announce today that we're going to introduce to the market a new 700-volt electric portfolio, designed um, for the off-highway and including inverters, electric motors and generators. Okay, sounds great. Can you give us an example? Yeah, when it is about the system, let's think for a moment about the implement function of a mobile machine. By combining the electric motor with the hydraulic pump in the best way, you do not only optimize the energy efficiency of the system, furthermore, you can also improve topics such as controllability, dynamics, noise, and we at Exroth, we are the right partner to do so. Yes, and wow, I mean, this is something completely new, right? It is. Yeah, so what else makes the new 700 volt electric portfolio so special? I would summarize the highlights of our new portfolio with the off-highway design, mm -hmm. the scalability of our products, and for sure, functional and electrical safety. Okay, uh, now you have been really precise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maxi. But, but let, let me give you then some more details. Yes, please. Uh, just, just a take tiny a, bit. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Just take a look at all of those applications behind me mm -hmm. and imagine the duty cycles. Yeah? And then think about what a component being integrated in those machines has to endure. Shock, vibration, high temperature ranges. And then keep in mind that a component like an electric motor has to provide the full performance without any derating, and that's about the whole expected lifetime. So if you do that, you will realize pretty fast that this requires a dedicated off-highway design. And this is what our portfolio specified for. It is developed for the off-highway in order to meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned uh, scalability. Yes, that's true. Let's stay for a while at this reloader application here, just to explain the topic of scalability. You see what I mean? Not only that we are speaking here about different machine sizes, it is also about different functions, such as 
driving and working. So at the end of the day, also the requirements on power, on torque, on speed of the electric motors will be highly different to each other. Supporting a platform-driven approach of the OEM therefore requires to have a scalable portfolio. That means electric motors with different diameter, length and winding configurations. And that is basically what we do. And wait, what about safety? Yes, last but not least, functional safety, very important topic, not only in today's conventional machines, but also with regard to electrified topologies. Our new inverter platform will provide functional safety according to the machine directive, the ISO 13849. And this is based on our long-term factory automation experience and our new automation platform, Control X. OK, I understand that you have given this a lot of thought, right? We did, we did. <laughs> OK, how does uh, the gear unit fit in there? Very good topic. You know, also here we are enlarging our portfolio in order to bring the torque on the ground. For all applications with hub drive top, um, topology, our well-known and proven GFT family is not only available, it is furthermore modified for being combined with our new 700 volt electric motors. And then in addition to that, Bosch Rexroth is developing new central drive gear units for axle driven applications, a one speed and furthermore a two speed solution for higher power demands. Mm -hmm. And there must be also developments on hydraulics. Yeah, for sure there are. I mean, as already explained by Alexander Fleig today in the beginning, our new electronified open circuit pump, the so-called EUCP, will assure additional degrees of freedom and functionality. Furthermore, in the industrial hydraulic world, Rexroth successfully supplies since many years the concept of an electric motor plus a hydraulic pump. As a buzzword, a speed variable drive for the optimization of the system. That means for parameters such as efficiency, dynamics, noise, and this is in further development also for the off-highway now by using our new 700 volt electric portfolio. So you see at the end with EUCP combined with electrification, the customer will achieve even more performance. So thank you for explaining the components so well. What about the system? Yeah, that's true. As already mentioned before, we intend to be a system supplier. Um, for our customers. That means we are not only taking care for developing the right electric products, we are also eager to support the OEM in the journey to design the entire solution. You know? So, and that's uh, somehow our mission statement. And since electrification in the off highway is not just limited to the driving function of a mobile machine, but also concerning the implement and furthermore the auxiliary function, a system software in the end is needed to bring all of that together. So a dedicated development uh, for each vehicle function and a power management, which is the heart of the system by coordinating the performance of all components and um, ensuring that way enhanced efficiency, dynamics and comfort. And as previously already mentioned by me, also functional safety will be on board. Mm -hmm. But Maxi, what if I played the role of the moderator, just for a moment? Um, may I ask you something? Uh, okay, let's see. <laughs> what if I ask you to summarize just by using your own words, once again, the highlights of our new 700 volt portfolio for our audience? Okay, well, um, I'm not the expert for telling the truth, but of course, uh, I tried uh, to follow you up. So, uh, yeah, well, it was system approach, yeah. designed for the off highway. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Uh, many different product configurations and power classes. Right. And of course, yes, well, here, safety. Perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whew. I think I should place the questions here. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> So I heard that you're already working together with uh, first customers. What about that? That's true. As already published in the media, we are collaborating with the in order to improve the energy efficiency of the system and in order to meet requirements on noise reduction. 
The project with Kalmar Cargo Tech is about implementing battery electric reach stickers for the harbor environment in order to fulfill upcoming emission regulations. Mm -hmm. But why did Sennebogen and Kalmar choose Rexroth? Good question. You know, um, I think the off highway is um, offering the OEM a quite good selection of potential suppliers for the airline. Starting with who are extending their portfolio now out of the factory automation for internal combustion engines, for axles and gear units, and finally automotive suppliers. All of them with specific strengths, but at the same time also with weaknesses. <laughs> so you want to say that Rexroth is the better partner? Yeah, for sure. That's what I want to say. <laughs> we, Bosch Rexroth, as the global market leader for mobile hydraulics, we come up with a very deep application know-how. With our 40 years experience in factory automation, we know how to develop electric products, which are then combined with Rexroth gear nets. And finally, you know, Rexroth is a Bosch company. That means we can take advantage of all Bosch innovations being introduced into the passenger car and commercial vehicle market. So overall, we are just one company, but we are working on that, comp and on that topic of electrification with different perspectives. That means we are a serious partner for the OEM in order to realize the new generation of electrified machines. Yes, the perfect partner for you, the OEM, to transform mobile machines. So, questions left? Well, let's start our Q&A. So, here's directly a really good one. So what's the reason for 700 volts? That's a very good question. Yes. You know, in the market, there are different voltage levels visible. Low voltage up to 48 volt for lower power demands. For example, when it is about the forklift segment, voltage levels up to maximum 120 volts, and then voltage levels above 400 volt. So why 700 volt? Due to the lower electric currents, there are basically no power limitations when it is about 700 volt. And that makes it the perfect voltage level for platform-driven approaches of the OEM. And furthermore, you have to consider as higher the voltage level, the higher the energy efficiency that you can reach and the higher the machine availability by shortening up charging times of the battery. And last but not least, when looking at the commercial vehicle segment, which also has a strong influence on the off highway, we see more and more the voltage level of 700 volt to be set as a standard. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for this good answer. So I would like to choose this one. What is your experience in electric drives? Also, this is a very good question. You know, the brand Rexroth is highly appreciated and known in the market for hydraulics, in particular when it is about the off highway market segment. But it's interesting to see that Rexroth also has a long-term experience in factory automation. In fact, the origin of our business unit automation and electrification solution is going back to the year of 1958. And currently we have an installed base of electrified solutions in the market of more than 2.5 million solutions. And this is really a huge experience that for sure is also utilized for developing our new electric portfolio for the off highway. So thank you very much, Matthias. I'm You're totally welcome. convinced the audience has now a deeper understanding of the strength of your products. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to successfully complete this very first live session. And yes, you experienced a lot. We had high ambitions uh, for you. So it's time for a summary, right? Let's welcome back again on stage, Alexander Fleck. So good to have you back here back on stage. In. First question, most important question, do you stick to your earlier answer that classic hydraulics will still play a major role in the future? I think everything that we've heard today from the guys about electrics, about uh, connectivity with device management and about electronics supports this statement. Um, it's all about finding the right integration and complementing all these technologies for mm -hmm. better solutions. And this will finally uh, open up new opportunities to build um, safer, cleaner, 
overall more efficient, let me say, green machines. And I believe that also everybody out there will benefit from this as uh, we develop new business opportunities by also uh, having more sustainable and efficient solutions there. Mm -hmm. So rest assured, uh, hydraulics, I, I, I don't like to call it classic hydraulics. For me, it's modern, up-to-date hydraulics, or simply just hydraulics. They will still stay strong in our focus. We have mm -hmm. many... Uh, Surprises there still up our sleeves. Today was more the focus on the other technologies. Just a glimpse. Um, let's keep that for uh, our big mobile 2021 uh, conference, uh, which is coming up next year. Again, something to look out for. Many new surprises. Yes, fingers crossed for this. Wow, I mean, the famous mobile. Hopefully it will take place in regards to Corona. But if yes, where? Where it will take place? Um, actually, um, in the beginning of the show, we saw a video from Peter Chida. Mm -hmm. This was right from the site where we'll have to take it, where, where we'll have, uh, where we'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, our new customer and innovation center in the beautiful city of Ulm. And that's where we'll, it will happen. Okay. So you mean you're talking of a real event with real face-to-face -face meetings? Face to face, maybe mask to mask. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. It will surely be a little bit more exclusive, mm -hmm. uh, of course, with an all necessary uh, safety measures and precautions. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're planning to take it also into the virtual world, also based on today's experience. Um, yeah. Let's, let's see. I'm well, looking very forward to that. Yes, me too. I hope to get an invitation, or should I say, an access code? <laughs> Maxi, you're on the top of my list, of course, because you've guided us through this <laughs> event today so marvelously. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> the pleasure was all on my side. So thank you very much. Uh, I learned so much about transforming mobile machines, mm -hmm. and I think so did the audience. Oh, so do I. Uh, uh, I, I ho really hope so. May I end with a, with a per very personal statement yes, here please. in the end? It's, uh, th that's something that is quite important and very near to my heart. Um, we have been talking a lot about technology today. Um, and I think the guys have done a good job in explaining and giving good reason why sometimes we even think we can deliver the best technology. None of this would have been possible without our great customers out there that are working with us, that are constantly challenging us uh, to come up with these best solutions. And none of this would have been possible with the great people at Rexroth. They are working in teams spread across the globe and still united by a strong passion to transform mobile machines with our customers. These people are the real strength of this company because I should safely say they are obsessed with technology and customers. Mm -hmm. So yes, together true greatness knows no limits and the future looks indeed bright as a Bosch Rexroth partner. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maxi. I just got the information that uh, if you, uh, in case that you don't see the download button or uh, the expert chat button, please reload the page. And with this, we are drawing to a close with our first Rexroth on-air show. So yes, you've had the chance to convince yourselves. Bosch, Bosch Rexroth is the result of an ambitious idea. Never stop improving. And I hope you were able to notice that this was also our goal for today. Thank you so much for uh, participating. As I just mentioned, don't forget to go to the download area. The expert chat will be activated right now. So you have been waiting for it and now it's waiting for you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.